Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall, and today's tutorial is a tutorial on how to bring images from your computer to Cricut's design space and have them work with your Cricut cutting machines. Now, a quick disclaimer about images that you find online and big brands, images, and logos like Disney or sports teams. A lot of people will tell you it's okay to use those images for personal use, but just be careful when you're using those images because some brands Disney in particular, are not okay with you using those images even for personal use. So just make sure to do your due diligence and check out the license on the image type, especially when you're buying images from Etsy and places like that, because oftentimes those sellers don't even have the rights to be selling those images. So be careful when you're using branded images. Your safest bet is always to purchase them from places like Cricut's Design Space because Cricut has a licensing agreement with those companies. All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's get started. For this tutorial, I will be using an image that you can find on my blog. When you go to my blog, you'll be able to download a scalable vector graphic, or as you probably see in Cricut groups, an SVG. SVGs are my favorite file type, and the reason that they are my favorite is because they are scalable, so you can resize them as big or as small as you want, and they will never get blurry or pixelated because they're not created with pixels. They also are created in layers. So if I have an SVG, for example, these are finger puppets. So there's several layers. There's a face and there's two layers for the body. So scalable vector graphics, SVGs, they maintain all those different layers when you bring them into design space. What often happens is that somebody will share an SVG like this into a Facebook group. And since Facebook doesn't support SVGs, Usually what's being shared is a JPEG or a PNG, a rastered image. A raster image is an image that's created of pixels. So when you zoom in, at some point it'll start getting pixelated. So it doesn't work the best with your cutting machine and it doesn't maintain all the layers. So now instead of having all of these as different layers, it's just one flat image. So I'm gonna show you how to upload this file type and what you can do to make it back into a layered image. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to upload an SVG so you can see the difference and why you should always look for those SVG files. So I'm just going to do one of the images for my tutorial. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of my image. So often what you'll do online is you'll find an image and you'll grab a screen grab of it. Again, make sure that you're paying attention to those licensing rights so that you know what you're doing is okay. And then in Design Space, we are going to upload that image to Design Space. So I just clicked Upload, and then I'm going to grab that screenshot right here. I'm going to choose Complex and then click Continue. You can start by deleting the background. So the Magic Wand tool is my favorite, the little wand. We're just going to click on the background, and you'll watch the background immediately disappear. That looks really good for our first layer. So I'm going to bring that in. We look like we have all the background deleted. And you can even click preview at the bottom to see what your cut, your cut type will look like. So that looks good. I'm going to click continue. It would be very tempting to save it as a print and cut image because it looks like it has all those layers. But what we actually want to do is save it as a cut image. I'm going to save it as a print and cut image so I can show you why you shouldn't do that. But as a reminder, if you want to cut this on different colored paper or vinyl or even iron on, you'll want to actually save it as a cut image. So we're going to save it as a print image, and then we're going to bring that in. So here he is. It looks like he's ready to go, but if I click make it, so if you ever get to this page and you realize, oh no, I can't actually change any of these colors, it's because Cricut thinks that you want to use your home printer and actually print out the image and then cut it. So we're going to come back and we're going to cancel that. And you can actually make the change on this step right here where it says fill. We're just going to say no fill. And then now I can change the color. But you'll notice I lost all those different layers or what appeared to be appeared to be layers, but they actually weren't since it was one flat image. Once you have your background layer, we're going to upload a, another copy of that exact same screenshot. We're going to choose complex again and continue on. Just like before, we'll erase the background layer. And now I just want to pay attention to this head shape on the top. So I'm going to delete the body, and you'll notice that if I click preview down at the bottom, I still have this line here. So I'm going to use my eraser tool, and I'm just going to erase away that little line 
so that there's a break in his face. And then click preview again. So now I can see that I'm getting somewhere and I'm going to have his little face soon. And then I'm going to use my crop tool. So if I preview this, I just wanna crop in on his head so that I don't get any of that bottom piece. And then click continue. Again, I wanna save it as a cut image since I'm building a layered design in Design Space. So I'm gonna click save. And you can also rename your pieces as you're creating them to make it a little bit easier to find them in Design Space. So I'm going to color sync this to the same color. I know what my SVG file should look like, so I kind of have a little bit of an unfair advantage, but I want two pieces for my finger puppet, and then I want his face to fit on the top of that. So I'm gonna bring that to the top and resize it so that his face sits right on top of there since these are felt finger puppets. I'll resize it like that. So then we're gonna come back and we're going to do that step again to grab the extra details of his face. And you can play around with all the uploading tools. I don't mess around too much with the advanced options, but you can reduce the colors so that it picks up more or less color tolerance. But the magic wand and the eraser usually are enough for me to get by. So now I'm just focusing on this little tan area. So I'm gonna erase the bottom there, erase this head part, and then I want those ears and I don't want the eyes. Then I can use my eraser tool and erase this outline around his ears. Speed this up. I'm also going to erase his eyes and the bottom body part here. If we preview it, we can see how we did. I missed a part here and here. Preview again. Clean this up a little bit. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We're going to crop it down so that we just get the ears and face, and then preview it. Okay, looks good, let's continue on. Save that as a cut, and insert that onto our canvas. We'll resize this to fit our finger puppet, and then change the color to a nice tan color. Okay, so that looks good. Now we have one last step for the eyes. Back again, upload the image, grab the same screenshot. Complex, continue on. Now we just need the eyes, so I'm just going to erase basically everything except the eyes and the nose. And then we can use our eraser tool and erase around this area here. And we won't pay too much attention to the other stuff because we're just gonna crop in super tight, make a little preview, and we're good to go. Save that as a cut and continue on. And then we'll bring that into our file and resize it. That is a very big finger puppet, so let's resize it so it's nice and little. I think my finger puppets are supposed to be like three inches tall. Okay, so now that's a more realistic size. So when we click make it, now our colors and layers will all spread out across the mats like they're supposed to. All right, so now that we know how difficult that process was to change all those layers, I'm just going to grab that SVG file and open it and bring it in. And it looks like they would be just flat images, but when I click a save and then bring it into design space, you'll see that it comes in and all of the images, and this is why it's so important to find those SVGs, all of those images have all of the different layers. So let's ungroup these and just take a look at the fox since that's what we care about. Delete these out. And here is our fox. So you can see that all of that work that we did, it's already all done for us if we just grab the correct file from the beginning, we can resize it so they look even a little bit more similar. But there you go. That is why it's so important to grab the SVG from the beginning because it has all of the layers, everything is perfectly lined up and ready to be cut with your Cricut machine. But I know it's not always the case that you can find that SVG file or you wanna create your own image and it has all those different layers. So that's kind of the workaround to if you find a flat raster image and you want to bring it in and create all those different layers 
you can, it just takes several steps. So hopefully that was helpful and answers a lot of your questions on why your image is showing, showing that it's supposed to be printed when you want to cut it in all the different colors, and then you can edit and change it to whatever color you want. You'll have to let me know if this tutorial was helpful and if you had any aha moments and if now it makes more sense as to why images are looking the way that they do and how to convert them to be kind of more of what you're looking for. If you have any suggestions on other tutorials that you'd like to see, make sure to leave them in the comments because I will do tutorials that you recommend before I do other tutorials. And if you have more Cricut questions, make sure to join my Facebook group, Cricut Crafts with Carly Hall. I'd love to have you there. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.